Hello and welcome to the Salesforce Posse podcast recorded on the 12th of May 2021. On this episode, we take a look at Salesforce's service Hyperforce that they announced back in December. We have a think about the potential benefits that this will make to our org and the current understanding on costs and how this is being rolled out. Okay, so what is this thing called Hyperforce? So back in December 2020, Salesforce announced Hyperforce. Ben Taylor, president and CEO of Salesforce said, Salesforce Hyperforce is a quantum leap forward in how Salesforce can accelerate our global customers' digital transformations and empower them to grow fast and scale on our trusted platform. But What exactly is Hyperforce? Now, the best way to explain it is to explain how Salesforce is architected at the moment. Now, you may have seen how Salesforce describes multi-tenancy, which is the cornerstone of their current architecture. They describe this in terms of their platform being a tower block and a customer renting a room in that tower block. The customer then can utilise all the capabilities available to them in the room, so the electricity, the water supply, etc. But it is all those resources are shared across the tower block. So if one comp customer may be using a lot of more water than others at a specific time, then they can, but it all kind of benef- you know, balances itself out and everybody benefits from the economies of scale. Now, when Salesforce launched, this was revolutionary. Uh, and this is where Salesforce kind of gained such, you know, a massive momentum. But as with everything, technology has moved on. And from what I can see on the outside, Salesforce found that they were basically getting constrained by this tower block because they were becoming so successful. Uh, in fact, Salesforce has many of these tower blocks called pods or instances. Now, and if you take a look at trust.salesforce.com, you can currently see they have around 314. And these hold production orgs as well as sandboxes and, you know, trailhead playgrounds and things like that. Now, generally, Salesforce puts fewer orgs on a production pod or instance than those dedicated to sandboxes where they kind of load it up and, you know, performance isn't much of an issue. But there is a problem with this because as customers start and want to use more and more resources and more features and more functionality, the capacity of these tower blocks becomes a problem. So um, although we never really see this, you know, we never see the performance issues. So if you have ever been notified that your org is going through an org split, this essentially is Salesforce taking your org off one instance and putting it onto a brand new one to kind of balance the resources out. But this is, you know, quite a lot of effort and results in a little bit of downtime for your org as they kind of migrate things around. Okay, so where does Hyperforce fit into this? Well, now Salesforce has been a bit woolly about the details, but this is what we know. The aim of Hyperforce is to unify the foundations of the various Salesforce clouds and allow Salesforce to scale rapidly using public cloud partners. Now, this essentially is saying that rather than Salesforce running the tower block themselves, they're going to be utilizing other public cloud partners. So AWS, Google's cloud platform and Azure for the core plumbing of that tower block. But where the customer kind of, or us, interface with Salesforce, we don't notice any difference. But this makes a huge amount of sense because rather than you utilizing the economies of scale of just all Salesforce customers, Salesforce is now utilizing the economies of scale of everyone using AWS, GCP, or Azure. The benefits that that bring just massive, you know, and and it also means that Salesforce doesn't need to manage these physical servers in the data center. It can kind of offload that um, 
that responsibility to the public cloud owners to a limited extent, or to a certain extent. It allows them to deploy and innovate even quicker, and it also allows Salesforce to meet local data storage needs. So if you want your Salesforce environment, say, running in Germany, then you can, or maybe it's India, or in theory, anywhere the public cloud services have a location. But at the moment, Hyperforce Data Residency is only available in India and Australia, and currently only for the core Salesforce platform and in US and Germany for customer 360 audiences. But of course, this is obviously going to expand over time. So how does Hyperforce impact your Salesforce services? So Salesforce explicitly says, quote, the use of Hyperforce will not have a negative impact on any of your use cases or integrations and will function as any other Salesforce instance. So essentially, this is an underlying architectural change, and we won't see any difference when we're working in our Salesforce orgs. But for example, some things may have been changed in that architecture. So for example, how our data is stored in the Salesforce database. So traditionally, Salesforce runs on an Oracle database. So maybe they've changed that part to maybe a modern, scalable NoSQL database on the public cloud. Or maybe they've just changed to an open source database. Back in 2012, Salesforce came into the news for looking to hire 40 to 50 Postgres developers for a huge project to, quote, design and implement major pieces of the Salesforce.com core database infrastructure. So maybe this is a result of that effort. Maybe their core database infrastructure was actually Heroku or something else. Or maybe it was just a smokescreen to save money on Oracle license renewal. Who knows? But they have also contributed to HBase, a NoSQL database based on Google's big table and used by Facebook, among others. And so this could form part of the change to the underlying platform. But whatever they have done, if they're following the serverless and kind of public cloud kind of common architectures, you can be sure that we will eventually reap the rewards further down the track on a much scalable uh, solution, maybe less governor limits, uh, limits, and also that innovation coming from Salesforce. So how much does Hyperforce cost? Well, nothing. We pay for it in our license fee, and there is nothing to pay. So now Salesforce are migrating orgs into this new architecture. So if your org has been scheduled to move over to the new infrastructure, it's essentially the same steps you would need to go through as if your org is being split to a new instance or pod. So if you've done that, it's probably that you don't have anything to do. So things like updating any hard-coded references, if, you're, you, if you whitelist IP addresses, then kind of whitelisting the new IP addresses. But the majority of this uh, orgs, I, in my experience, will have really little or no work to be done. One thing Salesforce does say is that you can pick the location of where you want your Hyperforce environment located, but you can't pick the public cloud. So if you pick London, you could end up on GCP or Amazon AWS, but it's not, it's not in your control. They're just going to drop you onto one or the other. Other than that, it takes about three hours to complete the migration. So there is a bit of downtime uh, that you can kind of coordinate it with your Salesforce AE if the times they give aren't appropriate to you. Uh, and that's about it. And now is the Salesforce ecosystem news for April 2021. If you want to find the latest Salesforce news, then search and subscribe to the Salesforce Posse using your favorite podcast player or visiting salesforceposse.com. So first, we can't continue without mentioning how COVID-19 has been infecting parts of the world, and specifically recently India. 
they have seen a massive spike in cases and infrastructure struggling to cope with the demand for healthcare. Now, I've been working on a couple of projects where people I work with have been affected by the Indian pandemic, and nations have started to help. Benioff has loaded a 787 stacked full of medical supplies, including oxygen concentrators and pulse oximeters that landed on the 8th of May in India. Salesforce is also making a donation of $1 million to local partners in India that are supporting vaccine distribution and food security to some of the most vulnerable communities. The community has also rallied to support India. Sebastian Wagner has connected up with a number of other certified technical architects to bring CTA mocks for India. The group of volunteer CTAs are offering offering mock CTA exams to Salesforce architects in return for donations of 450 euros or $500. All the money goes to Ashya Patra, sorry if I pronounce that incorrectly, but it's an Indian charity providing meal or packed grocery kits to the marginalized and low income segment of Indian society, comprising of daily wage earners, migrant laborers, construction site workers and needy people at old age homes and night shelters. There's a lot of international focus on oxygen and medical supply, therefore the CTA mocks for India want to channel their efforts to the underprivileged. It's an absolutely brilliant idea. They hit their 10,000 euros goal in under eight days. Now I've donated and you can still donate now and the details can be found in the show notes. Salesforce has introduced Salesforce Data Pipelines. Now, this allows you to consolidate your data stored across your organization into Salesforce. You can then transform, clean, and organize the data into a coherent view directly within the bounds of the Salesforce platform. You can then feed the data back into other systems or write it back into your Salesforce CRM. What's great is they support over 50 different different external data connectors, including AWS Redshift, Dynamics, um, Azure SQL, Tableau, and Snowflake. So rumor on the street is that Dreamforce is back this year. Now, according to Nicole Rogers of the San Francisco Travel Association's chief sales officer and lead on Moscone Center bookings, she said that Dreamforce is coming back with an in-person event in September this year. But she says that Salesforce is absolutely committed to an in-person event, which if it does happen, will be the first major citywide convention in San Francisco since March 2020. Now, under the state's current health protocols, until the 1st of October, all in-person conventions, such the, of those at Moscone Center, will be capped at 5,000 attendees, unless a negative COVID test result or vaccination status is verified for all the attendees. Now, international guests can only attend if fully vaccinated. So I had my vaccination just yesterday. I've got my next one in uh, for what, five weeks or so. Uh, but to be honest, for me, I think it might be still a bit too soon. Um, most of the medical professionals I've talked to say that generally, you know, you get three peaks in a pandemic. So I think I may be watching this one remotely if it does happen. But who knows, we'll see how it goes. Trailhead DX or Trailhead X is on on the 23rd of June this year and it's free. So originally it was a developer focused event, but more recently it has been aimed at the whole Salesforce audience. 
Salesforce says it's for devs, admins, architects, partners, and IT leaders. Join us as we gather globally with trailblazers looking to expand their Salesforce skills. So there's gonna be five broadcast channels with 35 product demos, 27 content episodes, and 25 expert-led rooms, which sounds kind of cool. Um, they also have the multi-platinum artists, fits, and the tantrums. I think I think I've said that right, which will be headlining the event. But if you do want to join, it is free and well worth it. Go to salesforce.com slash trailheadx to secure your free ticket. Salesforce Summer 21 is right around the corner, so be sure to check out the Release Readiness Chatter Group on the Trailblazer community, where you can download release in a box, which I use every release. Also, they do an amazing PowerPoint presentation, which has basically all the changes in it. And what I do with this is I kind of cut out the things that I'm not licensed or don't have a license for, and those things that I want to focus my users on, and present it back to my business and it makes me look good in the process. Now um, all these change or all the all the links for this are in the show notes show notes so check it out. Uh, they also do release webinars and things like that but I'm not going to talk about the release because there's so many blogs and videos all about the release. I'm sure you can just Google it. And now for something completely different. Finally, April is not April without the Salesforce April Fool jokes. Now, my favourite by far was by Simon from Supermums, and he created a notification to users using Salesforce's in-app guidance, which basically popped up every time Simon D logged in which, and said, please voice verify to proceed. Due to the new voice verification system, every day you must say your full name twice clearly to Salesforce to proceed. Please do this now to proceed. <laughs> then he quietly sat back and listened to the chorus of the names echoing across his company. Although he probably could if he was in the office. Total genius. But yeah, awesome April Fools. But I think my most successful April Fool was uh, just after Salesforce had launched Salesforce Lightning. And I persuaded everybody that Salesforce was bringing back S controls because S controls were JavaScript too, and they learnt the mistake of getting rid of it. Uh, and that's about it. Um, but I do leave you with a quote from Brett Taylor, who is president and CEO of Salesforce, that says, every company right now is facing the, an imperative to go digital fast. Salesforce Hyperforce is a quantum leap forward in how Salesforce can accelerate our global customers' digital transformations and empower them to grow fast at scale on a trusted platform. So we are going to reap big dividends from this and hopefully lots more quicker innovation and more features appearing on the platform. So thanks for listening to this episode of the Salesforce Posse podcast. Please don't forget to follow or subscribe. And if you like what you hear, please let others know about it and rate the podcast in your podcast app. If you do have any news, be sure to contact us. And finally, thank you to our sponsor, admintoarchitect.com, that provide online Salesforce training to over 60,000 students across the globe. And they currently have a 50% discount on the site. So check them out. So until next time, ta-ta.